Ladies and gentlemen, I am Yuzwal. The game is Star Trek Online, and welcome once again to the Triple Time Warp. It is the 7th of June 2016, and as always, I'm going to kick this off with a spoiler warning. I am looking at content from the upcoming expansion pack, Agents of Yesterday. So if you don't want any plot spoilers, mechanic spoilers, ship spoilers, costume spoilers, crew spoilers, or spoiler spoiler spoilers, then now would be a good moment to stop watching this video and go do something else. I hear Riser is good this time of year. For the rest of you who are still here, let's get a move on. First and foremost is a little detail that I spotted courtesy of Susan at Kaj Drex. If you get a private message while you're playing your Agents of Yesterday character, it uses the bosun's whistle from the original series as your received message notification. Kind of interesting that one, nice touch. And while we're on the subject, environment suits, of course, last mission, Tangled Webs, we went for a little stroll on a Tholian ship, so um, kind of forgot to tell us to change back when we were done, so let's take care of that now. We'll just switch everybody over, energy dampening, energy dampening, energy dampening, and energy dampening. Yay! We're no longer wearing the sweat bags. Now, let's see what's next. Ooh, thank you. Wonderful. Um, okay, I'm not sure why he did that, but fair enough. Okay, diversions and community work aside, let's get on with the next episode. Explore Agents of Yesterday, and we're off to the Battle of Caleb 4. This is going to be horrid, isn't it? One of the Federation's greatest defeats. This is the battle that made Captain Kor's name, and oh yes, he's our recurring antagonist. This is... yeah, this is not going to end well at all. Hail the Admiral! We have a situation in the Caleb system. The Klingons are massing a battle fleet and it's pointed at us. Who else would it be pointed at? He's leading a force to respond to the aggression and he wants you to be a part of it. Oh, great. Still, we get a Mark II deflector and a Mark II phaser rifle. And, of course, the usual round of XP and other kind of XP. Accepts the mission, and this is a pivotal moment in Federation history, Lieutenant Commander. Which is awkward because it's also us getting our backsides kicked by the Klingons. Nakul may attempt to disrupt it somehow. Well, they may do, although, frankly, they'll probably just sit back and grab themselves some popcorn. And if they show up, we'll need to deal with them no matter what. Oh, doesn't that just sound ominous? To the Caleb Sector, which for some reason is off round by Romulan space. Okay, fair enough. Did they just take a jaunt up through Romulan space? I suppose they do have the treaty at this point. Plot a course to the Caleb system and engage the tremendous speed of Warp Factor 5. This is probably why... 23rd century space is actually only nine sector blocks across it would take far too long to get anywhere. And here we are, welcome to the Caleb system, specifically Caleb 4, an undeveloped class M plant and therefore high on anyone's grab this now list. I note that the mission refers to the thin red line. While I appreciate the shout out to the Napoleonic Wars, I forget exactly which regiment it was that stood up to a French cavalry charge in line which was considered tactical suicide at the time. I Actually, was it the 47th? Yeah, I think it was the 47th. Their commander later remarked that he knew them and didn't think it was worth the bother of forming a square. The Klingons are red. Shouldn't it be the thin blue line? Maybe the thin gold line? Actually, no, given the way this battle is going to go, the thin red line is highly appropriate because, let's face it, we might as well all pull on a certain colour of shirt. Begins the mission. Let's see how badly wrong this is gonna go. Welcome to Caleb for a little bit of a glitch there, and ooh, lots and lots of ships. All hands, this is Garrett on board the Yorktown. Commanding officer, T we know who you are, Admiral. We really do. Right, long range sense platforms have picked up a Klingon battle fleet, and they're attacking the relay network to disrupt comms and surveillance, because first thing you do is you blind and deafen your enemy. The Klingons are outnumbered, should they abandon reason, they're Klingons, and follow standard doctrine, fire to disable if possible. All ships, yellow alert, get out, Hakaze is standing by, and ooh, that's the Gemini. Alright, so that's the Dreadnought, is it? Well, let's just, let's just squirt and have a quick look at her. 
and they're making an attack run on the subspace relays. Fine, well that rules out any possibility of a uh, navigation error. Yeah. Well, she's not bad. You can see the design lineage that'll go on to form things like the Emissary class cruisers. But, eyes forward, the game is afoot. Let's just squirt the drives. Yorktown, of course, is another Constitution class. I think she's one of the original 12, but let's get this show on the road. So, weapons to power, turn it on the D7, and starboard shield's about to collapse, so arm high yield, and he'll get his arse shield into play. No, he won't. He's turning to maintain his fire as well. Boom, boom. Two solid hits through the down shield. Yes. Okay. Break down just for a second. Keep hitting him. Then twist away, trying to stay all the time on his down shield arc, and pop. There he goes. The clear information is breaking. All ships give chase. It's a trap, you idiot. It's a trap. Clings are down to two ships, and they have abruptly engaged their turbo plot engines. All except the one that hasn't. Come on. Off you go. Come on. You're not running away from me. Torpedoes away. You're chasing him. Boom. Well, we got one of them before he could flee. There goes the other one. All ships give chase into what is totally not an ambush. Again, we're seeing a reference to a Pioneer-class frigate here for ships of the Harakazes class. Of course, she's referred to as a utility cruiser in the menu. That's something that perhaps needs to be tied up, either by, well, really just by renaming utility cruiser to Pioneer-class frigate. Something else I need to do, of course, is switch in this upgraded phaser array and just double check that they haven't accidentally put us onto the modern style of orange phaser bank. So, forwards once again, the D7 has turned, he's offering battle, past the Yorktown, and wait, we're on point? Terrific! Fine, fire everything. And yet we've got the old style phaser graphics firing there, which is entirely appropriate. Nose down, keep forward to him, bring the R phasers into play as well, there we go. Collapse this forward shield, arm high yield torpedo, tachyon beam to make sure the shields stay down, and then here comes the high yield. And boom, there endeth the clear one. Wow, did some, who popped out sensor scan on that guy? Okay, interesting, we have a disappearing Klingon ship. Hmm, that's awkward. Never mind, we have more Klingons coming in. Yorktown is registered as 1717, so she wasn't one of the original 12. Interesting. I felt sure she would have been, well, Constitution would have been 1700, Enterprise is 1701. I felt sure Yorktown would have been 1703 or 1704, but I dare say there's a source listed over on Memory Beta that gives 1717 as one of her options. All of the Constitutions, of course, well, with the exception of Constitution herself, are named for World War II aircraft carriers. So, Yorktown, Enterprise, of course. Um, Defiant... Actually, no, scratch that here. I'm talking garbage. Defiant was not a carrier, as far as I can remember. Anyhow, I can't remember what she was. Rebalance the shields. High yield again. Tachyon beam again. Collapses shields. A little prompt when you get your science officer at the end of Painful Omens about what Tachyon Beam does might not be a bad idea, and not to mention its appropriate use and how it ties into auxiliary power. If only because we, uh... Well, that's interesting. He's... Okay, so the Klingon ships, I'm guessing they're meant to go to disabled halts, but it's just not doing it at the moment. That's the second one we've seen phase out on us like that. Uh, but that again would tie into a tutorial about the power sliders, so that's something that really needs to be dealt with. On the one hand, we're kind of getting out of the position where players should be having their hands held, but at the same time, it's still fairly early. Something on the sensors reminds me of it. That's because it is a cloaking device. It's a trap! Okay, we're in a little bit of trouble. They've got, and they've got modern photon torpedoes as well. We're about 20 different kinds of, just sit down. Okay, nice rocking bridge shot there. Battle plan Sigma 4. Okay, would that be the one that's listed as run like crazy? 
Oh, well, did the Enterprise just explode? I felt sure I saw a 1701 registry there just for a second. Uh, we appear to be somewhat boned. Um, ah, it's the Clothos, the mighty villain. I thought Cleons didn't take prisoners' core. Well, they can be gracious. Well, uh, that's an option. Temple Nomi and one of the Klingon ships, and it's the Knuckle. And oh, looky, we now have Klingon NPC ships. They're a little late to the party. That should have been in there, really, while the cutscene was playing. Until we break out of this tractor, there's not much I can do. And, of course, Daniels is going to shenanigan us past their shields. Understood. Beam us to the Klingon ship. I mean, it's not... Like, can we, can't we just beam a few bombs over? I mean... Arms photon torpedo, warp core, photon torpedo, warp core, warp core, photon torpedo, hi. Klingon ship, really large explosion, hi. Captain core, sudden reversal of fortunes, hi. So, Daniels has beamed us into a barracks. Lucky us. Okay, and she brought several bombs along. I won't ask where she stowed them on her uniform. And if we place them tactically, we can take down the power grid and take down the tractor beam. Good thinking, because I totally forgot to bring a bomb along. I was just going to hit stuff until it fell over. Right, so... Aha, one door. Klingons. Okay, door to the left leads to an engineering section. Fair enough, right. Oop. Hey guys! Yes, how do we get aboard? We transported on board, how else? I mean, we could have taken the shuttle cross over and politely knocked, but there you go. Don't think you would have let us on board. Anyhow, they've detected weapons fire. The jig is almost certainly up, but let's place the bomb while we're at it. There we go, it's a very 23rd century bomb. Eliminate them immediately. Yeah, the jig may well be up. So, out the door. Hey, you were the one who told us to charge into the manned engineering section and shoot everybody. Okay, well, uh, right, maybe she didn't, but it was a good place to set the bomb. Right, so where next? Up here? Ah, the door is locked and we don't have the key. Fine. Well, here's your door bypass. For some reason... I'm pulling out a 25th century phaser. Hmm, little bit of an issue there. Cut the door here, another good spot for the bomb. And okay, graphical glitch there. Oh, hi guys! Ow. Come on, down you go. Yoink. And yoink. And... Yoink. There we are. Jobs are good. Plant the bomb. And for the sake of sanity, don't work, ask where we were hiding that. Right. To the next bomb. Sabotage charge here. Again, cut the door. Nice touch this, that we're actually having to break our way through. And, hi guys. We'll just... No, you don't. Apparently, yes, you do. That's fine. And, oop. Massive overkill, but... Oop. Triggered the wrong disintegration effect there. And you... Don't go anywhere. Thank you. Right. Ooh, Mark III Energy Dampening Armor. Excellent. Bear in mind, of course, that because of the way things have worked out with this character, he is already level 11, so he's a little ahead of the curve, and the game is adjusting the loot to compensate. Now then. Bomb? Ah! Bomb. Not sure why we're planting it here, but who cares? It's as good a place as any to set some fireworks off. Now we just have to find the tractor beam controls. Ah, they're through here, are they? That's kind of handy. And the door automatically unlocked as well. The door automatically... Shouldn't we have had to cut that door? Just a thought. Oh, cutscene. 
You need to finish them now, all of them. Apparently, Mr. Melty Face does know them. And Cora's responding, well, I'm in charge here, and don't you forget it. Also, Klingon Guard in the background, old-style disruptor rifle. And, oh dear, we've been spotted. Little clipping error on Cora's uniform with his badge. And more Nakul, and we've met our main antagonist. Also, wrong phaser pistols on several of the people there. So... We're the Globflies. Absolutely, and like Globflies, we have a very annoying sting. The Nakul aren't here to help you, they're just here to help themselves. And he knows it and doesn't care. Oh dear. Well, for now our girls are lying. That's the problem with Klingons, they're very pragmatic. Never mind. Kill core. Focus your fire, guys. In fact, I should probably start using some abilities, that might help. Whoa, he hits like a truck. Excuse me, we'll just patch up. Let's drop some of the lesser NPCs first, take out the incoming damage, and let the bridge officers build aggro on core as well. Ooh, one of the Narkuls stayed behind. How very valiant. How very stupid. And they've just about beaten core down, except... He's kicked me through a wall. And then I get beamed out right as the bombs go off. Cor's a happy guy. We just blew his ship up on him. Then again, I suppose he is having a whale of a time by his standards. Okay, so that fight was rigged. I'm assuming we were meant to either lose it or get him down to one third health because he's got to survive. He's a canon character later on in DS9. Meanwhile, welcome back to space, where we have somehow blown up the Clothos with core... Why are we panning through empty space here? Oh, right, I see. And the game is afoot. Let's go rescue our comrades. Right, the tractor beam is down. No, it isn't. Oh, wait, yes, it is. Right, target the raptor. Open fire. Hit him with everything. Nice touch that it's not moving and... Alright, run away, run away. It's a valiant plan. Never mind, the flagship is secure. I don't suppose you're going to give us a hand here. No, apparently not. Admirals. This is what they're worth in a fight. No matter. Collapse his shields. And, well, this was probably overkill anyway. We punched a hole in him. You're welcome! be a nice touch if all of these ships were named, by the way. Break high. Get me our phaser array punching holes into the Raptor. And whoa, the Klingons have woken up. Power to shields. Reinforce everything. High yield and AP Alpha. Drop this Raptor fast and get the next ship into the fight. There we go. And... Wonderful. Would you mind paying it back immediately? Because I don't think I'm going to be able to take an IOU here. Make for heading 265 Mark 10 at best speed. Okay, that's an idea, but I'm getting my ass kicked here. Evasive maneuvers. Okay, come on. Rebalance the shields. And just open the distance. The Clothos is now a D5 Raptor somehow. Yow! They're not mucking about on this one, are they? This is going right through... That's going right through 100% shields. Cryptic, cryptic, cryptic. Blimey. <laughs> Wait. Okay, so all of the friendly ships got away, so they're essentially invulnerable, and now you won't be forgotten. You've done us all proud... Uh, Wait, what? You're abandoning me here with a load of angry Klingons. Garrett, you... Ah! Ugh. You, you had absolutely no intention of paying that favour back, did you? Terrific. Well, let's just keep them all busy, because we've got a lot of angry Klingons incoming at full impulse. Right. Collapse the shields. Hi, let's at least take this guy down. We've got a minute and a half on the clock. Shields are at full. And the Klingons aren't interested in fighting? Okay, we appear to have broken the mission. Oh, no, the Clothos has woken up. 
Right, and it's immediately spawning replacements. Here comes the another D7. Terrific, fine. Well, let's take out the Clothos. The second Clothos, which is throwing a lot of high-yield torpedoes about. Eee, gods. This is meant to be unwinnable, isn't it? Right, well, let's go win it. Evasive maneuvers. Shields at maximum power. Cycle engineering team as best we can. Get an intact shield between us and the Clothos. Gods, this guy is hitting like a truck. But I suppose that's deliberate. How long? 30 seconds. Come on. Starboard shield's about to fail. Keep reinforcing the aft shields. 20 seconds. Come on, port shield has failed. Rebalance. Engineering team again. See if we can't collapse his shields. Get a high yield torpedo out. There we go. Boom, two solid hits. Yeah, how do you like that? Scratch your paintwork a little. Two, one, zero, and... Okay, what's going on here? Looks like we've got... Oh, looks like we're dead. Well, that's nice. But the ship was lost with all hands. That's a sh that's a bit of a pisser. Do I have to roll a new character now? All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for the Agents of Yesterday series. Shortest expansion pack in history, except, of course, no, it isn't. Welcome to the modern STO era. We're going to get a new identity, which is coincidentally exactly the same as our old one. And we also have a speed training and reacclimation process that will help you to fit in with the uh, 25th century. And that totally doesn't make him look like the G-Man. Okay, so, welcome to the future! Well, the present. I, this is going to get extremely confusing. And welcome to the modern Earth space dock. Right, it's a little bit bigger than the old one. And, oh, you had something to say for a second. Right, so talk to the logistics officer. Welcome to Earth, Be busy day on the holodeck. Uh -huh. You might want to update your uniform beforehand. You might want to, but it's sending us to the tailor again. So, welcome to the new Earth space dock. We also have some new officers, courtesy of Starfleet. And the first duty officers, again, that's an XP thing. We may be slightly out of sync. I repeated a couple of missions on this character. But it's leading us to the tailor to immediately get us into the modern uniform, so let's just do that. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, farewell.